Hi, my name is Volker, and this is Application, the Typo 3 Community Podcast. Welcome to Application, the Typo 3 Community Podcast. One, two. Welcome to Application, the Typo 3 Community Podcast. I'm Jeffrey A. McGuire. You can call me Jam. And this is where we celebrate the Typo 3 community, sharing your stories, talking about your projects, and the difference you make in, around, and with Typo 3 CMS. In today's exciting episode of Application, the Typo 3 Community Podcast, you'll hear the second part of a conversation I had with Typo 3 CMS Chief Product Officer Volker Graubaum in March 2021. In the first part of our conversation, Volker and I talked about how he sees Typo 3 CMS, the Typo 3 Association, and the community's company Typo 3 GmbH as enablers for everyone who builds, uses, and benefits from the Typo 3 project ecosystem. Go back and listen to Season 1, Episode 11 of Application for more. In this episode, we learn about Fokker's origin story in Typo 3 starting in 2002 and hear some of his stories and memories from the community's early days. The introduction of the extension manager, the very first Typo 3 training session, Fokker's first time at Typo 3's famous community tech conference and snowboarding event, Typo 3 Board, while finishing his graduation thesis, which was a business plan for the Typo 3 agency that Fokker went on to found and run for 20 years, even though the banks assessing it told him that the internet was only a passing fad. In terms of Foker's role as Chief Product Officer, we touch on the importance of finding and developing new groups of users, new geographies, and verticals in places where Typo 3 is not an obvious choice. Foker tells a neat story about how Typo 3 was doing headless and decoupled before it was cool, and before those were actually terms for that, as far as I know, and makes a really superb point saying, as a content management and delivery system, we have to know how to tell good stories and create good content. If we don't know that, we aren't able to deliver and manage it. I hope you enjoy this episode as much as I enjoyed speaking with Volker to make it. So let's shift gears for a minute. How and when did you get involved with Typo 3? How did you discover it? Oh, um, actually, it was 2002, I think. What version uh, was that? That was um, between version 3.3 beta 4 and (laughs) 3.5. So it was um, actually at the time where Kaspar said, oh, I have to do something um, and ask his wife if he has two weeks time alone in his um, cellar. And then he came out and then the extension manager was there. Okay. So that's that's actually um, at least our, how I remember that. Kaspar, uh-huh. please be <laughs> patient if you hear that. And it was not exactly like that, but that is a story uh, we all heard. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, actually, that was, um, I think, in the summer 2002. And um, then, because we was um, the web team, um, my um, later business partner and I um, were the yeah, leader of the web team of the um, Nord Academy, um, a private um, high school um, where the dev days used to be um, a few years ago or so. Mm-hmm. And um, there we um, dis- was searching for a new content management system for the university or for the, um, yeah, universities, I think it's a better word than high school. Oh, is um, it a Hochschule? It's, yeah, it's a Fachhochschule. Oh, so I, in, I believe that those are called polytechnic in English, at least, at least in the old days. But anyway, yes, a, a technical yeah. university. So, yeah, and um, so we, um, yeah, we was looking, and then we decided, oh, Typo three seems to be um, the best system, also, especially because the new um, extension manager and the possibility to create easily extension for that. That was mm. a key feature at that time. Mm. Um, and then um, there was um, the first training. I think it was in October, November, um, two thousand and two. And um, guess who was our um, trainer at that time? Wait, am I really supposed to guess? Yeah. Was it Matthias Schreiber? Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. um, so um, yeah, it was um, there we meet um, 
Matthias the first time. And um, then, um, yeah, it was a really um, funny weekend where we learned really a lot of things. And um, Once again, I had some real connectivity problems during this conversation. Here, we got cut off, and I pick up the thread where we had left off. You were at the Nord Academy, and there was the first ever Typo 3 training, and Matthias Schreiber was the trainer. Exactly. At that time, yeah, it was a really great weekend, and we learned a lot of, um, not only about Typo 3, but also about the community, and... Um, then three or four months later, not sure about um, when the meeting was exactly, we um, yeah was driving together with um, another community member from Lübeck to Splügen to um, be member or to become a part of the first Type of 3 snowboard. No, not the first, but um, our first Type of 3 snowboard tour. Type 3 board. Exactly. Yeah, and that's um, how everything started and um, how so um, we jumped the, in the community. Describe the community in 2002. Oh, it was um, – actually, it was 2003, the snowboard tour. Mm-hmm. And um, so, yeah, it was a very, let's say, very small community at that time. But, um, yeah, it was a really great, very familiar um, atmosphere. We had um, – yeah, all the fun um, ha- um, doing snowboarding and doing other things. Um, we had the study thing um, we have to do because um, we had to finish a study work together with my partner. So we had only a few days um, in the mountains and the rest we had to work. But um, So you were up in the mountains, but you were actually being good students. Yeah, exactly. Uh-huh. At least a and, little bit. And, and- so... Yeah, and, uh, about... but we met Kaspar at that time. He was there, of course, and um, there were, yeah, all the people from the early times there. Um, I think it was also Olivier's first snowboard tour, uh-huh. Olivier Dobakau. Uh-huh. Um, so, and yeah, it was um, fun because we was coding, we was um, having fun, and um, that's what the Type of 3 community was at that time, and uh, for me, it is still like that, um, since um, we don't have a very hard, let's say, um, competition thinking on that, yeah. because um, the goal is not that we um, are um, yeah, compete between each other, but that we are competing um, with other um, systems. Mostly. Right, and 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 I would like to refine that even further. Um, um, not trying to, you know, uh, uh, bring down other or other open source systems or 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 ruin them or or take stuff away. I think it's, um, especially talking with Matthias Schreiber a lot. He's very strongly convinced that there's so much work out there and so much internet and so much digital activity that it's easier to build market and go new places and and perhaps convince people to move away from proprietary solutions into open source rather than you know trying to compete with wordpress or drupal or or our friends and allies really people who share the same code and the same ideals yeah exactly um actually there will be a, again we have to be more present in some markets um, and then we will compete, but that's not the first goal. Um, Actually, um, when we are talking about Drupal, for example, um, we have, of course, two sides of Drupal. We have Acquia on the one side and on the other side, we have the Drupal community, which is um, yeah, very open to. And Drupal is very successful in um, yeah, activating people to um, yeah, to bring um, their self in the community work. Right. And um, I think that is a place where we could learn a lot of things mm. uh, from Drupal and um, how we can focus on um, including the people. And Rhys has written um, something about um, the um, taker and the makers yeah, yeah, and finding the balance. I'll and, post a link um, to everything we talk about in the show notes, obviously. 
I just wanted to say that um, that's a that's a nice that's a nice way to to look at other communities and other products, right? The developers and agency owners and community members in Drupal are very open. They're really into PHP. They love open source. And you know, when Typo three uh, Benny and the, uh, uh, whoever it was working on the patch, you know, fixed the far wrapper security vulnerability. That was immediately, you know, publicized and contributed. And Drupal took the patch that went into Typo three and other and other systems took it as well. And like, there's a real natural uh, cooperation there, um, you know. And then you can look at the commercial level or the the promotional level or all these other levels where where Acquia comes in and you know Acquia has. Uh, you know, full disclosure, my former employer, um, yeah. for all the good that Acquia has done in some ways, um, you know, there's some there's some things that that people can legitimately question. Um, and yet, I think that the creation of Acquia and th- made it possible for everyone in open source to reach higher, you know, because Acquia really positions itself as as competition with Adobe and 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 even bigger things. So I think yeah. I think there. I think that all of us still have way more doors open because of the because of the the things that that Drupal has done and gone through. And I think that it is far from a perfect example. So we can also all learn from each other. Yeah, exactly. I think so too. So, so jumping uh, back, I want to jump back now. Yeah. Um, and uh, just mention that in my conversation recently with Adrian Zimmerman, I think yeah. every third <laughs> sentence. <laughs> Talking about the Typo three community, he'd be like, "Yes, and of course, Typo three board and snowboarding and Typo three board and snow." But he loves like he's such a snowboard fanatic. It was really fun talking with him about that. I think it's um, very um, interesting to see because um, when you are um, looking, even in other communities, um, they have fun events, but um, the um, when it starts on thinking about events in Typo 3, we first had fun events and then became more professional in the time. That is so interesting because 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 it's definitely the fun came late to uh, I mean, of course everybody had some drinks, everybody had a party or whatever, but like getting together for the purposes of having fun is really an afterthought for most communities. That's interesting. Yeah. And, so talk um, to me about talk to me now, uh, please, about um, how you founded your agency and 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 that you know the company that you ran for twenty years and some of the people you uh, you brought in. Oh, actually, it's um, we found uh, we um, the um, study not teasers but uh, work we uh, was writing in Splugen was um, actually the business plan because we had the study um, e- um, entrepreneuring. Nice. And, um, so we was writing the business plan for our um, company uh-huh. <laughs> at that time. Wow! And it was um, it it was totally focused on open source, and um, the um, it was quite funny because um, we don't wanted to collect money, but um, the business plan was given to um, different banks to just to get a feedback for the voting for the um, for the results, uh-huh. and the bank said. Oh, it's a really solid business plan, but the the internet isn't it dead? <laughs> the internet is just a passing fad. <laughs> yeah, it's like and um, yeah, that was quite fun. But um, yeah, and then we found it, Typo three. And, and did uh, they? First, but did they tell you? Did they tell uh, you to, to do something else? Did they say like you should publish a newspaper? Or no, it was just <laughs> a study work. So it's um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I started in it. And uh, my partner joined later full time. Um, in the beginning, he was um, there. And um, at that time, I already worked with a lot of um, people from the Type of Three community um, on a freelance base. And um, I already always try to um, yeah think about how we can solve um, things so that it can be- come back to the core. And um, yeah, later um, I became bug maintainer. That was a time where I was still coding. Um, mm-hmm. We've um, founded the commerce 
Commerce Initiative. It wasn't an initiative in that time, but um, three agency was to, together was building a complete new shop system for Type of Three. Aha. Uh -huh. And um, actually, um, at that time, it seems to be the right way, but um, we would have it would have been necessary to spend much more energy in that to make it um, a stable future. Based, what year? Uh, what year? What year are we talking about? Oh, I think 2005. Right. So anyone listening now who doesn't remember the 2005 internet, there were not web services. There wasn't e-commerce, um, you know, via API. There wasn't, this, this wasn't a thing really. There so much of what we take for granted now wasn't there. And um, just, it made perfect sense to start your own CMS. Um, in the late 90s and the early 2000s. It made perfect sense to build uh, it, whatever it was that you needed into the the package that you were using. I joined open source in 2005, and there wasn't, in, two, in 2002 and 2005, there wasn't GitHub. There wasn't even Git, right? And there wasn't, uh, so there wasn't version control as a service. There wasn't all this free stuff. There wasn't a way, one official way to deal with patches or pull requests or whatever. So, so communities had to build everything from scratch. So even though that sounds crazy now, because you just, there's a, a, a hundred different things that you can plug in to do e-commerce at that point, it made sense, right? Now we see that you would have had to spend a hundred million dollars and be super specialized to succeed with it. Um, but at the time, that it wasn't clear that that's the way the internet was going to go, right? It was one possible future. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, that was um, what we were building there. And um, actually, it um, this um, yeah the extension was used in uh, quite a big shops. We worked together with a marketing factory on that, for example. Nice. And yeah, later then I um, yeah stop coding more and more and then we had for example um christian kuhn in our company lolly lolly who is now working for benny frank negler used to work for us cto at the gmbh yeah and um so yeah we had um yeah actually we was very near to the community at um that time already motivated to um, make the community more professional yeah, so one point was um, working on the events. I used to be part of the um, event committee. And um, at that time, later I became leader of that. I started, um, as mentioned before, the um, first type of three bar camp because I was very clear on the idea that we have to look um, around. We shouldn't be focused on type of three, what we are doing and how we are doing it. Um but we should also look around if we could learn from others. And um, that's still a, that's still a situation though in Type Three, and so many communities look inwards first. And yeah. so, do you think that's part of your job now as Chief Product Officer to also look uh, around as well and and see where Type Three fits? Um, yeah, definitely. It's, yeah, um, it's a very important. Um, part of my work i would say because um yeah of course it's important that we are focused on what we are we, we couldn't um say we are something totally different um than what we are but um we of course have to um first and then well second we have to listen to the community to all the people who are using typo 3 and know from the market what they need but um, to adapt new user groups or verticals, um, it's very important that we are listening to the market itself and um, right. have a look what are people doing right now and what are they going, doing good, where can we learn things and so on. So how do you research a market that doesn't know about you? How do you find and define and discover and communicate with people who could really benefit from using Typo3 but don't necessarily know about it or consider it now? There are a lot of people um, where it's very easy to explain that Typo3 is a really good choice, but they're afraid of the market. Um, especially when we look outside, I would say, um, Dach and Netherlands. So right. um, German-speaking German, Europe and, and, and Benelux, let's say. Yeah, exactly. Because um, 
outside uh, Typos 3 hasn't a wide um, range um, so that you can find a lot of agencies and all that. And um, I talk with a Swedish company who says, actually, they would take Typos 3, but they are afraid that I, they are bound to me as an agency because oh, there's no but... other agency who can do Typos 3. Ah, okay. So, so outside of Benelux and DACH, there is less of a local service provider market. Exactly. It is. Um, we have it um, in the Eastern Europe area. There are um, more. We have it in, um, in French. It's um, not so small, but um, then it's becoming smaller. There are a few in Spain. There are a few in UK, but you have to search for them. Right. And, and so it's so, not a it's not a it's not an obvious choice. They're not there aren't those agencies just floating around like and in Düsseldorf in Düsseldorf I think that there are maybe 150 typo 3 agencies or a thousand or something, right? So it's not yeah, it's exactly. not the the local choice. Okay. But how do we get the word out to the people we could still help in those places? And how do we maybe and and then is the problem also convincing more agencies to use typo 3? Yeah, that's also uh, one part. There's a great initiative, the Kokomon Initiative, for example, which are focusing on um, creating new onboarding material. And, Kokomon uh, is a Type of 3 community marketing and communications initiative that's happening in 2020. Yeah, that's one part, to find new agencies and give them the right documentation and onboarding material so they can easily start. Mm -hmm. um, then there are... Um, Companies who say, oh, Type 3, isn't that the, the old system? There, it's quite easy um, to show that we are a very active community with a lot of um, integrations, a lot of active installation. Very up-to-date code base. Yeah, and um, especially in terms of security, it's, um, yeah, it's very, very good because uh, we have a very, very good uh, security team. Plus, so, plus um, small ad for Typo 3's architecture, apart from an excellent security team and best practices and yeah. using really up-to-date coding standards, the fundamental decision to have a back-end system that can talk with any front-end system you want, also since the beginning of time, essentially, is a huge advantage when it comes to security because you don't you can't accidentally set something in the front end that opens up the back end to all sorts of attacks. It's separate logins, separate displays. It can be, you know, and of course nowadays with 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 headless and and front end frameworks and native apps and everything, all typo three is just sitting there ready already to communicate with a digital front end world. But anyway, from a security perspective, really good decision. Yeah, exactly. Thanks. Sure. So yeah, and um, but of course there are others. So um, we have to tell um, much better stories about what we can do. So for example, you just mentioned headless. There is this headless initiative. We have also it's um, not on the um, on the new concept of how you're um, creating um, yeah decoupled system or headless systems. As you mentioned, we or we are a decoupled system since two thousand and two. And um, we have to um, do our homework in terms of um, more um, stable APIs and so on. But um, actually, we um, Type 3 is decoupled. And um, there is a very good headless um, package where you can easily interact with um, different JavaScript uh, frontends. It's out of the box ready for a view. A view. Uh, JS front end and people are working on React and on other topics. So um, it's, it is all there what we need. And um, that's what I mean with the uh, strengths of Type 3. Okay. That, um, we have the core and we have all the add-ons and um, um, co coupled with the um, flexibility the core brings with you. There's a lot of communication to do now. Yeah, exactly. Right, the and, technology's uh, there, the community's there. That can always grow. That can always improve. Mm -hmm. Now, more people need to hear about it. Speaking of telling good stories, what is the coolest thing that you've ever built or done with Typo Three? What's the coolest thing is actually, um, I think um, we make um, we use Typo Three for a big tourism company, and they had this iPad catalog. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, we make an aggregation of all the content coming from outside possibility to add the content and uh, enrich the content in type of three and then we have um, created a, a grid system in the backend so the uh, people could use the different content types and the different content structures and put it at the right place in their structure. And um, the grid we had in the backend was actually the grid we had um, on the iPad. Mm -hmm. So um, after that, we um, pull it out to the iPad, the content, and then they had a really, really great iPad app. And, so and was, uh, that a, was that a, like an in-store sales tool for them to take people through holidays or was it, could I use that? No, it's well? more a catalog. It's a more print catalog to read. They, they don't have the buying button at that time, oh. but um, it was uh, um, getting the experience of um, all the great places they had. Uh -huh. And um, what is quite cool is that um, actually what I'm describing here right now is um, the job headless systems are doing and what they are saying, what they are the best for. Right. And when I... Um, now think about when we have done that. Um, it was, I think, 2012 or 13. So, so and you were no, using it to integrate diverse data sources, enrich and organize the data, and then output it to a native iPad format. Yeah. In 2012, that is pretty cool. It is. Yeah. And um, when we are talking about other stories, it's not what I have done. Actually, I'm not in the company. I don't have to um, say what my agency is, but uh, what you can do with Type of 3. And um, I really like the case um, where you use uh, Type of 3 as a kiosk system mm -hmm. so that it was running um, and all the point of sales on a kiosk system. Um, all Type of 3 installations, which are interacting um, with a um, backend server, which are... Um, sending out data to all the kiosks, but um, also can um, work locally. Mm -hmm. So um, we have this uh, yeah, this point of sale functionality there. Wow. And um, I think it was done in 2010, something like that. Ooh. So, um, yeah. Wow. So, yeah, it's um, actually, um, of course, we have, in terms of technology, we um, moved on and um, Type of 3 is going the way with it. But uh, in terms of use cases, um, we can tell all the cool use cases we are doing right now and yeah. have done and built it already 10 years ago where it has no name for that. Right. And before it was cool and, um, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. And, you know, I wonder if the people who've done, who've built that stuff, you know, 10 years ago and before it had a name and before it was a trend and uh, um, I wonder if we uh, forget to tell those stories because it was, you know, so long ago and it's so obvious that we can do it. Do we forget that other people need to know that stuff or that that stuff is still up to date and relevant? Yeah, I think we forgot it at that time. Mm. Um, actually, um, we was very, f or we used to be very focused on the community. We, st I'm not sure what the founding year of the association was, um, 2005, 2006, something like that. I think since we don't have this commercial view on that, there was a lot of agencies working with that who has a commercial view, but yeah, internally yeah. the community don't have this commercial view and. Um, it's like um, it's not very interesting to tell the story from a business value side. Of course, we had the conferences and the developer days where we are showing really cool use cases from a technical view. Right. So right. you can find a lot of talks about really cool technical solutions we have built. Sure. But um, we are not so focused on bringing, um, making the business. Yeah, and, and that's actually... That's that's actually another thing that I've um, ended up focusing a lot of my career on. You, the technologist, have a super great idea that has a real world application and you get super duper obsessed with the implementation and exactly how to structure the API and how do we do the versioning and what's the integration point and all that stuff that's really, really interesting and important and no marketer, no 
per budget owner without a technical background can even listen to you. It's just blah, 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 computer words, right? Even if you're explaining a really, really great idea. And I love translating between, okay, you know, good, great technical ideas and then the value that they actually deliver. That's like, that's something that I really, really love um, doing. And, and, and I was in open source back when it was only developers and it was only technical people. And I know exactly what you're talking about. And if you even tried to bring a case study to a conference, people were like, <gasps> I had some of my early talks when I was trying to, when I was trying to understand what, what I was thinking and I was presenting these, I, these, these crossover ideas. And I, I was told, I'm not going to name events, but I'm still a little bit hurt. Um, I was told that um, our conferences don't want soft talks. You know, if there's not a code example in your talk, don't even bother applying next time. Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah, and I, I, I think we used to have it before too. And um, when I uh, take over the conference, right? Um, the I in the I think 2013, I it was the first conference I um, uh, was completely uh, responsible for. Um, I described um, the how technical a talk um, may be that no code in slides. Okay, all right. So that was the switch because um, actually when the conference was, um, the first time was I think 2005 and it was um, the first yeah official event um, except the fun events we had. Okay. And, um, then it was really cool because, as you mentioned, we are on. We was all developers at that time, and um, all technical people, and um, we had use cases. But you have to show how you have created the use cases, sure. and um, not what is the story behind and the why. Um, and then um, later, I think, and two two years later, the uh, type of three developer was um, days was started. Ah, which the developer was very incident. on code and um, totally focused on developers, and that was totally cool and great because you could learn so much and had hand-on sessions and all that. And um, yeah, yeah. But um, the conference still stays at, um, let's say, on a top-level tech conference. Yeah, I've always found that interesting. Um, uh, in in. Uh, coming to typo three from the outside or coming back to it or however you want to say the special, the idea of specialized events. And I know that all of this is in discussion again and the pandemic and the Corona and everything is who knows what we'll ever do anymore. I love actually as a result of the Corona times that, that, that I spoke at a Frankfurt user group last week or the week before, and I can go to a user group anywhere and I can really be part. I think the community building if we keep live streaming and keep participating in our events, I think that's amazing. But yeah, definitely. anyway, what I was getting to before was just really fascinating that there's a type of three con, which is sort of business and the and and technology presented in a way that it's interesting to business. And then you have the dev days where you're allowed to completely geek out and like talk in code and just like talk about whatever cool implementation and the new JavaScript library. And then, you know, and then you have the university days, which are a user use case, a vertical that has its own conference talking about the technology, how it helps there. And I just, it's um, plus then type of three board, which is a really good excuse to do some, do some, uh, winter sport while while technically being at a conference you know but I, I i was really fascinated by how how the typo 3 breaks these things up into smaller conferences i i i think that helps choose sessions and 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 audiences and so on um on the one hand i think that it may be uh, the the drupal model of having one conference for everything is a is a is a great community builder right where people have chances to interact with each other on 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 any level but you know they Everything has its strengths and weaknesses. Yeah, I think um, so either. But um, when what I started with the conference is um, that I say, okay, no code on slides. And um, mm -hmm. we first, or actually that was, I think, first in Amsterdam. The year before, we had a tech day, we had a business day and a community day. Yeah. So we have focused topics a little bit, yeah, more um, theme specific on one conference. And um, then we um, later had the award in Amsterdam. There was um, the Type of 3 award yeah. there when you joined us. Um, that was I a great totally, 
yeah, it was. And uh, actually, it uh, was like, um, yeah, making Type of 3 more open um, at the events. Um, we used to invite um, other open source communities and products before, but we invited the technical people before. Mm. And I think um, starting with Amsterdam, it was the first time that we invited um, yeah, different people, not only the technical guys um, to the conference and that we have talks from people who don't know Type of 3 in any way, yeah. and um, but can tell things about content um, creation or storytelling and all that. So I don't because remember. it all belongs to the community and actually type of is um yeah as a content management system or a content management and delivery system, um it's used to um create stories, create content, um and tell the stories outside and bring it to all the people out there. And um so we have to know how we are creating or um good stories and telling good stories and creating good content. If we don't know that, we aren't able to deliver it and manage it. Thanks to the Typo3 Association for sponsoring this podcast. Thank you, B13 and Stephanie Kreutzer, for our logo. Merci beaucoup, Patrick Gaumont, Typo3 developer and musician extraordinaire, for our theme music. Thanks again to today's guest. If you like what you heard, don't forget to subscribe in the podcast app of your choice and share Application, the Typo3 Community Podcast, with your friends and colleagues. If you didn't like it, please share it with your enemies. Would you like to play along and suggest a guest for the podcast? Do you have questions or comments? Reach out to us on Twitter at Typo3Podcast. You can find show notes, links, and more information in our posts on Typo3.org. Remember, open source software would not be what it is without you. Thank you all for your contributions. Cut, cut, cut. Cool. So I said that. Cutty, cut, 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 cut back to our actual podcast. Um, um, cut on. Cut on, please. <laughs> so, <laughs> <it's>, uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Cut, cut, cut. You know. Cut. Uh, cut, cut. Actually, um, we have to take um, a few minutes bio break. But um, oh, okay. I s- yeah, bio break now. Boo-ba-doo. Okay, we are back. After a very, how was your bio break, Volker? Mine was very satisfying. Yeah. I also, I also got a tiny coffee. Yeah, actually, uh, I have um, great water. Ah. Uh-huh. And uh, I'm doing good things with the water. Oh. It's viva, okay. viva con aqua. Right. So is that um is that like is that like local water that's that's made fuzzy rather than driving water all around the world? Something like yeah, that. Yeah, actually, it's local water, but it's um also it's um they um are spending um money they are earning for better things i think for that other people have water in areas where it's not ah, free great excellent <clears throat> very very good doing what we can so so cut 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 um <laughs>